Spectrum, A Brief History of Modern India, Unit 2, Advent of Europeans and Consolidation of British Power in India. Chapter 3, Advent of Europeans in India. Though we talk of ancient, medieval and modern periods in history, history is a continuity. It is not always easy to distinguish clearly when one period ends and another begins. So if we think of history of modern India as beginning with the advent of Europeans, we need to go back to what is generally considered the medieval period, that is the 15th century itself. Indeed, it took a time even before the Mughals came and established their empire. The Portuguese in India The quest for and discovery of a sea route to India After the decline of Roman Empire in the 7th century, the Arabs had established their domination in Egypt and Persia. Direct contact between the Europeans and India declined and with that the easy accessibility to the Indian commodities like spices, calico, silk and various precious stones that were greatly in demand was affected. In 1453, Constantinople fell to the Ottoman Turks who were on the ascendant. Merchandise from India went to European markets through Arab Muslim intermediaries. The Red Sea trade route was a state monopoly from which Islamic rulers earned tremendous revenues. The land routes of India to India were also controlled by the Arabs. In the circumstances, the Europeans were keen to find a direct sea route to India. 15th century, Europe was gripped by the spirit of resistance with its call for exploration. At the same time, Europe made great advances in the art of shipbuilding and navigation. Hence, there was an eagerness all over Europe for adventurous sea voyage to reach the unknown corners of the East. The economic development of many regions of Europe was also progressing rapidly with the expansion of land under cultivation. The introduction of an improved plug, scientific probe management such as crop rotation and increased supply of meat, which called for spices for cooking as well as for preservation. Prosperity also grew and with it the demand for oriental luxury goods also increased. Venice and Genoa, which had earlier prospered through trade in oriental goods, were too small to take on the mighty Ottoman Turks or to take up major exploration on their own. The North Europeans were ready to aid Portugal and Spain with money and men. Even as the Genoese were ready to provide ships and technical knowledge, it is also to be noted that Portugal had assumed the leadership in Christendom's resistance to Islam even as it had taken on itself the spirit of exploration that had characterized the Genoese. Historians have observed that the idea of finding an ocean route to India had become an obsession for Prince Henry of Portugal, who, has, who was nicknamed the Navigator, also domination of the Eastern Mediterranean and all the routes that connected India to Europe. Pope Nicholas V gave Prince Henry a bull in 1454, conferring on him the right of navigate the sea, sea to the distant shores of the Orient, more specifically as far as India, in an attempt to fight Islamic influence and spread the Christian faith. However, Prince Henry died before his dream became a reality. In 1497, under the Treaty of Tordesillas, 1494, the rulers of Portugal and Spain divided the known Christian world between them by an imaginary line in Atlantic. Some 1300 miles west to the Cape Verde Islands. Under the treaty, Portugal could claim and occupy everything to the east of the line, while Spain could claim everything to the west. 
The situation was thus prepared for the Portuguese incursions into the waters around India. It was in 1487 that the Portuguese navigator Bartolomeu Dias rounded the Cape of Good Hope in Africa and sailed up the eastern coast. He was well convinced that the long sought after sea route to India had been found. But it was only 10 years later that the that an expedition of portuguese ships set out for india in 1497 and arrived in india slightly less than 11 month 11 months time in may 1498 from trading to ruling vasco da gama the arrival of three ships under vasco da gama led by a gujarati pilot named abdul mazid at calicut in may 1498 profoundly affected the course of indian history the hindu ruler of calicut the zamorin however had no apprehensions as to the european's intentions as the prosperity of his kingdom was due to calicut's position as an entry port he accorded to a, he accorded a friendly reception to vasco da gama the arab traders who had a good business on the malabar coast were apprehensive and were not keen on the portuguese getting a hold there for centuries a trading system in the indian ocean had numerous participants indians arab africans from east coast chinese javans among others but these participants had acted according to some tacit rules of conduct and known had some sort of overwhelming dominance though all were in it for profit the portuguese changed that they wanted to monopolize the hugely profitable eastern trade by excluding competitors especially the arabs vasco da gama stayed in india for 3 months when he returned to portugal he carried back with him a rich cargo and sold the merchandise in the europe market at a huge profit the importance of direct access to the paper trade was made clearly by the fact that elsewhere the europeans who had to buy it through muslim middlemen would have had to spend 10 times as much more the same amount of paper not surprisingly other profit seeking merchants of european nations were tempted to come to india and trade directly a voyage was undertaken by pedro alvarez cabral to trade for spices he negotiated the established a factory at calicut where he arrived in Sept- September 1500 there was an incident of conflict when the portuguese factory at calicut was attacked by the locals resulting in the death of several portuguese in retail in retaliation cabral seized a number of arab merchant ships and coured in the harbor and killed hundred of their crew besides confisc- confiscating their cargo and burning their ships Calicut was bombarded by Cabral. Later, Cabral succeeded in making adventurous trade treaties with the local rulers of Cochin and Canaro. Vasco da Gama once again came to India in 1501. The Zamorin declined to exclude the Arab merchants in favor of Portuguese. When Vasco da Gama combined commercial greed with ferocious hostility and wreaked vengeance on Arab. shipping wherever he could his rupture with the zamorin thus became total and complete vasco da gama set up a trading factory at kenanore gradually calicut kenanore and cochin became the important trade centers of the portuguese gradually under the pretext of protecting the factories and their trading activities the portuguese got permission to fortify these centers